That's my plant Patrick, and I love him. But sometimes I forget to water him, and Patrick gets dehydrated, which is not good. You don't do it to your friends. You've got their back during hard times. That's why I'm making a cool soil moisture monitor that will remind me to water him and keep him hydrated even during hottest summers. The idea behind the device is quite simple. I design a humidity sensor, an enclosure for it and add an indicator on top that blinks red when the soil is too dry, reminding me to water Patrick. But obviously it cannot look like this. I wouldn't even give this crap to my worst enemy, not speaking about my favorite plant. Hey Nick, why don't just buy one from AliExpress? Because those devices look ugly and you have to press button to check the humidity. For that you need to remember to press the button. With my device you don't have to do anything, it's full auto. To make this video even more interesting, I decided to make a small competition between me and a freelancer I hired. Let's call him Bob. Competition for the best device design. And since the device is intended for Patrick, he will determine the winner. I guess he's intelligent enough for the job. Nowadays animals are like new kids and plants are new animals. So let's get to the point. I spent quite some time talking to different freelancers until I realized that finding a good one was much harder than I'd anticipated. Some of them wanted an insane amount of money for a 3-day project. Who am I to pay that much? A Nigerian prince or what? Eventually Bob agreed to do it for $200, which seemed pretty cheap to me. So I was quite happy. I sent him references and a description of the device I wanted, but without too many details. I wanted to see how he would solve tasks without my help, just with references and description I gave to him. Then I started waiting for his solutions. Honestly, I was hoping he would solve at least one existing problem somehow creatively. But as the saying goes, wish in one hand and shit in the other, see which one fills up first. I guess freelancers are trained for speed, but not for creativity. It probably also depends on the freelancer, but with a bop, review after review I was receiving solutions that were really bad. Eventually I got tired of fixing his mistakes and just said, screw it, and decided to build what he had designed to see how it worked. For $200 you obviously don't get a functional prototype, you got something better, schematics and 3D files. So I had to order everything myself. And here is what Bob the freelancer has designed. The main body of the device, the lid, which is supposed to glow red when the soil is dry, I guess is meant to be glued inside the body. The PCB for the components has to be glued to this part and the lid opens to allow battery replacement. Yeah, it's even hard to say where Bob didn't screw up. The lid that covers the hole for battery access is quite big, held on by two screws and requires a sealing ring. And even with that, I have doubts it will work and properly seal the device. Obviously, the ceiling ring is non-standard and will have to be somehow magically created. I know a few ways to make such a ring from two component silicone, but that's too much work. So minus 5 points for the lid design. I guess the PCB is supposed to be embedded in this cutout. But why the hell is the cutout only 0.0 mm deep? It's even more shallow than some politicians campaign promises nowadays. The cutout depth is definitely not enough for the PCB to be fully embedded in it. I even ordered the most thin PCB I could, but still. Bob, I'm sorry, but that's another minus 5 points. Also look at its overall size, it's insane how thick the case is for AAA battery. That's because Bob decided to use a plastic holder for the battery that has to be attached to the PCB. The holder is large and I guess it couldn't fit inside without making the main body very wide. But if this body part is already customized and 3D printed, why not just 3D print a holder embedded in the body part itself and add some SMD contacts for the battery? I wish I knew the answer. Small remark, I'm not a mechanical engineer, but I guess there are a million ways to solve the same problem. Some of them excellent, some of them good enough, and some are just bad. Bad like the one involving PCB, the lid and the ceiling ring. Also, I must point out that this already is improved version after a lot of revisions. First versions were much worse, looking like this. When I got my hands on the schematic, I got even more frustrated. There is no need for this component, this one or this one. I have no idea what this button is supposed to do in the final circuit. There's also no need for a 555 timer since there's already a microcontroller that can do the same. At that exact moment, it was at this moment that he knew that $200 were somehow wasted. Or as any businessman would say, invested in your experience and mine for the sake of science. Now I definitely know, buy cheap, buy twice. So if you ever hire a freelancer to design some device for you, the price has to be much higher than $200 to get at least some decent result. The instructions also need to be extremely precise. 
don't expect creative solutions. On the other hand, to write such a detailed instructions, you would need to have some engineering experience and you would need to have everything solved by yourself first. But if you have already solved everything by yourself and have an engineering experience, why do you need to hire a freelancer in the first place? So I have quite mixed feelings after using freelance platforms. Eventually I didn't want to solder components to the PCB and assemble the device farther because parts just do not fit. I assume that electronics that Bob has designed somehow works because circuit he used is nothing new, you can find it easily online. I also assume that code that he wrote that consists of several lines also works, so plus 5 points for the working circuit and the code. Now let's ask Patrick what he thinks about such a design. Hmm, quite harsh, but that's exactly what I was expecting. Now it's my turn. So to please my plant, I needed to design something better, something simpler, smaller and more minimalistic. So I spent three evenings after work designing the device, and one week after I received all the parts from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that provides PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC machining and many other services useful for both hobbyists and professionals. The range of materials PCBWay works with is insanely wide and covers the needs of most people. However, if you have special requirements and need fancy materials, custom colors or anything else, PCBWay can handle that too. Everything is done quickly and of course with high quality. The reference link for the PCBWay is down below. So my design in contrast to Bob's has only two 3D printed parts. Two. No ceiling rings or unnecessary overcomplicated parts. Only main enclosure and the lid. That's it. The batteries slide inside through the top and then the top lid is screwed into the main case. All other components are soldered directly onto the PCB. I managed to fit all the electronics into a very small square area, which I consider quite an achievement. I soldered everything manually because… why not? I didn't want to order a stencil, there are only few components after all. So how does the device work? Two batteries in series provide 3 volts to power the brain, which is a microcontroller, this small square. The device is almost always in a sleep mode, consuming very little current. And because of that, I gave it a code name Koala Plus Plus. Koala sleep for around 22 hours per day, but this device sleeps even more, 23 hours and 55 minutes, being precise. This allows it to operate for approximately 2 years on just 2 batteries without needing a replacement. The device has a sort of built-in alarm that wakes it up once every 10 minutes. If the moisture level is below a certain program threshold, LED blinks red and then the device goes back to sleep. And if moisture level is fine, LED stays off and doesn't irritate you. The entire cycle of waking up, measuring and blinking takes just a few seconds. Nothing from the user side is required, no buttons, no intelligence, really koala-alike style. The board also has two contacts for the battery. One is spring connected to the positive terminal and the other one gave me a real headache. Because for a long time I couldn't figure out how to make an electrical connection between the battery contact which is at top and the springy contact which is at side. The stupid plastic battery casing is not conductive. Stop using it, plastic kills nature and makes Koala++ Plus Plus design more complicated. The point is how do I fix it? One solution is to remove the plastic. This would expose the battery's negative terminal. However, I don't think you as a user would appreciate such a solution, even if you only need to do it once per year. Other solution which took me some time to figure out and dried my brain a little was to use a hat. Metal hat. Not for me, but for the battery. I crafted it from a nickel strip. With this head, the problem is completely solved, even with the plastic steel on the battery. The head makes contact with both the battery's negative terminal and the side springy contact on the PCB. And when the battery has to be replaced, the crown is passed onto the new one. To secure the board inside the case, I used good old grey goo, because why not? So from this side there is no way for water to enter the case and damage the electronics. The only potential entry point for water is through the top. But checkmate, there is a screw thread. And you might ask how good the seal is. Well, easy peasy, no chance for water to get inside from the top either. What a great design I made. That's what I would say if I hadn't made some mistakes, as always. For example, I forgot to include a protection diet to block voltage if the batteries are inserted in reverse. Without such a diet, the circuit simply burns. Who wants that? No one. Also, adding some kind of indication to show the correct battery orientation would have been nice. But we have a judge in here, so let's see what Patrick thinks about it. 
Not sure you will like this part as much, my friend. So, as the final step, I programmed the controller, fixed a few bugs in the code and it seems like the device works as expected. I also took into account all the mistakes with the circuit and 3D parts and all the files for this project, including the microcontroller code, can be found on my Patreon. Consider subscribing, it would greatly help with the channel's development. And don't forget to check out my previous videos, they're extremely cool.